Thanks for joining us for another piano repair video. Uh, in today's video we're going to show you how to uh, replace a piano string inside the piano. We uh, previously made a video that shows how to actually replace the string but uh, since then we've gotten quite a few requests to um, demonstrate how the piano, the, how the string is actually replaced inside the piano. And so that's what we're going to be going through today. Um, here we've got uh, in front of you, you've, we, we, sh we show, um, this is a console piano, and uh, over here we've got uh, actually two strings that are missing. Um, they, um, so this would be, be uh, demonstrating two broken strings. Uh, not very common, you have two that are broken right next to each other, but uh, here we're missing two, two strings. So you might come across a piano that um, has, has a string missing, and uh, uh, you know the, the coil might still be on the pin, um, because if it broke, um, you'd still probably see the coil unless somebody took that off. Uh, so what I've done, I've already moved, removed the, the coil, the, the string coil from the tuning pin, um, and uh, turned out the, each of the two pins, um, actually each of the four pins, uh, half a turn. <clears throat> now, uh, what you want to do is you want to make sure that um, uh, before you go to put uh, the string on the on the tuning pins, that you turn the pins out far enough so that you have room to wind the string onto the pin. And as you, as you wind that string on, the pin's going to go in further. So you want to make sure it's uh, turned out far enough that you've got room to uh, turn turn the the string onto the onto the pin and we're going to be showing you how to do it without taking the pin out okay in our previous uh, installation video we showed it with the tuning pin out of the pin block and it showed you how to put the pin uh, the string on the pin and then insert that into the pin block but here we're going to do it so uh, we're going to we're going to do it with the pins just leaving them in the piano um, not taking them all the way out but we want to make sure that um, they're turned out far enough so I'm going to go I've already turned it out, each one out half of a turn so I'm going to go that's another half a turn which would be two we want to do three turns total okay because we're going to get uh, three or three and a half probably because we've already got um, uh, we're going to put about three uh, coils onto the onto the pin so we've got it out one one and a half two two and a half and three okay so that ensures that we're going to have enough room for the string and we're going to do that with the same one or the with the other um, pin for that for that string that makes two or one because I already did one half one and a half two two and a half and three okay and the other thing is you want to make sure that the <clears throat> makes it a little bit easier is that is that the hole um, where the tuning pin goes through where the string goes through in the tuning pin is um, facing up and down okay because that makes it easier because your string is going to come up here from from the underneath and the, uh, you might be wondering if you're not sure why we do two pins well the reason is because uh, for almost all the strings um, one piece of wire one one string is actually going to go down wind around a hitch pin over these pins down here are called hitch pins and so the string is the wire is going to come down wrap around these uh, these right here are the bridge pins wrap around the bridge pins and then hook around the hitch pin and then come back up and and uh, attach to the other tuning pin so <clears throat> for the great majority of the of the plain wire strings this doesn't apply to the to the base strings which have copper windings on them but the great majority of the plain wire uh, strings will be configured that way where you've got one piece of wire one string that will actually do um, do two tuning pins or two two strings that you see here um, so um, that's why we we're doing two uh, two tuning pins. Now, <clears throat> what you want to do, I've got a piece of the old wire. If um, if you don't have the old wire, you, you're going to have to try to measure because you want to make sure you replace it with the same size. 
If you don't have the old wire, you're going to have to either measure the string next to it, uh, or if you've got the coil, you can uh, uh, unwind a piece of the coil and, and measure the wire that way, but um, you do want to make sure you replace it with the same size wire that was in there originally. Sometimes the wire sizes are written or stamped on the plate. Uh, this one doesn't have it, but uh, some pianos do have that where, you know, it'll say like 13 here. That means uh, this is 13 and any of them after that until you see the next size. So maybe this one say is 13 and a half, 14 and 14 and a half and so forth. So, but, um, but again, um, I measured this and we've got another video that shows you how to actually measure this the wire with a micrometer. Uh, this one is 32 thousandths of an inch, which is 0 0.032 inches, um, which uh, equates to size 13 and a half on our um, piano wire uh, gauge chart. So um, I'm going to I'm going to use this um, this piano wire. I've got a 10 foot length, which is how how we sell it. Uh, this <coughs> up here the the strings are actually shorter, so a 10 foot length of wire I'm I'm guessing is probably going to be enough to to do two strings up at this end. Okay, if we went further down, you know, the 10 foot would be only be enough for for one string, but for the most part that'll be enough to replace any plain wire string. So, <clears throat> um this is size 13 and a half, and what I do is when I handle piano wire, I wear gloves um because the oils in our skin, or the acids in our skin, can uh, cause rust or corrosion on the on the string after a period of time. So I'm just going to unwrap this string so we can replace the the wire. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is. Uh, generally what I'll do is, uh, what you're going to do is you're going to put the string into one of the tuning pins. And here I've got, uh, you can use a tuning hammer for this if you want to, to turn the pin, but I've got uh, this, uh, this piece here, it's a ratchet star head, it's got the star shaped tip, um, and it's meant for a 3 8 inch ratchet. Um, so that's what I generally use when I'm... Uh, when I'm stringing or putting on a string because I can ratchet it rather than having to reposition my tuning hammer for each one. So I'm going to run it back here behind the pressure bar and I've got my stringing hook here and once I get it back behind the, the pressure bar I can use the hook to grab the wire and pull it out. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it right over here, and sometimes, and in this case, sometimes it's easier to grab it with with a needle nose pliers, so you can get it because sometimes it's tight quarters in there. And what you want to do is you want to get it into the hole. There we go. And then position it so that um, the end of the wire just barely sticks out the other side of the tuning pin. Okay, so um, for an example, I'm going to show you a close up here of that. Here I've got a, a tuning pin. Okay, so when you're going to, when you put the wire through, okay, you want to do it so that. that it just sticks out just a little bit. Okay, probably they say like the width of a, the thickness of a, the, the th amount it sticks out is the thickness of the, of the, um, of the wire. Now what you're going to do here is um, coil the wire onto the, onto the pin and once you get it turned on a little bit, I'm just going to hold this in place with my finger and what you want to do is make sure that you're turning the pin uh, clockwise. Okay, so uh, if you're coming from the top, you're going to be going to the to the right. Okay, and so if you hold that with your finger, and then make sure as you come around, okay, and I can see a 
then I'm going to want to use my coil lifter and string spacer, which is here. It's got a hook at the end to hook onto that wire to make sure that my string stays uh, in the right position. Okay, and what I'm going to do is one I want to get about two and a half coils onto the pin. Okay, so there's about two and a half. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is going to take some parallel pliers, tighten up that becket. The becket is the part that uh, that um, goes right through the through the hole. Okay, and once I've got that in place, I'm going to hook it and wrap it around the hitch pin or the bridge pins. I'm sorry, the bridge pins. And of course, this is the middle pin, so I'm going to use the middle set of bridge pins for this string. And then I'm going to go down and wrap it around the hitch pin, make give that a nice tight uh, twist. And then, just to kind of get a general um, size, I'm going to cut this extra long. Okay, I'm going to only have to do about three inches beyond the tuning pin, but I'm going to go extra long here. So I've got this... Uh, just so I don't have that extra wire hanging around. Okay, but I've gone gone quite a ways um, above the, as you can see, I've gone quite a ways above the tuning pin. We only needed to go about three inches, but I um, wanted to make sure. I'm going to do the final cut once I get it into into place here. Okay, so then what I'm going to do is wrap it around the other. Well, probably before they do before I do that, I'm going to run it up here behind the pressure bar. And I'm going to wind that up there so I can grab that and again get it whoop, get caught in behind the other the string next to it which we don't want to do. And again sometimes it's good to grab it with a needle nose pliers. There we go. Okay so I can come over here then, once I got in that in place, then I can wrap it around the, the bridge pins. And have that in place. Then, once I've got it uh, generally in good, in, in good position, then I can go ahead and uh, measure. I'm going to take um, my stainless steel rule and measure three inches beyond the tuning pin, which is right about right about there. And then that's where I'm going to cut it off. Okay, so that's the length that I need. Um, so and we can pull this back a little. Okay, it'll come it can come off the bridge pins um, because we can get that back in place once we once we get it close to uh, being tight, as, as tight as we want it to be. But I'm going to take this and get it put into the hole. There we go. And the same thing there. We want to do it so that the, the wire just peeks out the other side of the tuning pin. Okay, so once we've got that in place, again, we'll do the same thing. We'll hold that, that wire in place. Make sure we're going clockwise with the tuning pin. And I'm going to use my coil lifter and string spacer here to keep it going in the right so we get a nice tight coil. You can use a stringing hook too to hold the hold the string. Okay, and there I'm, I've got a full coil and a half, and so I'm going to tighten up the the becket. 
kind of gives a bend to that Beckett. Okay, and as we can see, our our string is starting to tighten up there a little bit. And so I'm going to now wrap it around the bridge pins. And there it's starting to tighten up on me. Okay, and that one's pretty tight, so then I'm going to come back here to the first tuning pin that I did. Pull that coil up. Tighten that one up. Okay, and you want to make sure your coils on your on your tuning pin are nice and tight. Okay, sometimes you'll have to push from the top to push the top coil down a little bit and push the bottom ones up a little bit to make sure those are nice and tight. Okay, and kind of get a general tightness to them. Um, Okay, we'll, we'll fine-tune it once we get the action back in the piano. You may have noticed there's no action in this piano. I had taken it out. It, it's much easier to, to replace a string if the action is out. Um, in most cases, except for in a spinet piano, the action's uh, fairly easy to take out, so it makes the job much easier um, in replacing a string. So uh, once you've got that tightened up and, and uh, to, to fairly tight, um, and again, we're going to fine-tune it um, and pull it up to pitch and everything once we get the action back in the piano. But that's the basic process of, um, of re replacing a string inside the piano. Okay, this way you don't have to take the... You don't have to take the um, the tuning pins out, and um, you, you get it. and you don't want to drop things down inside the piano, just like I did. But um, uh, but uh, replacing the string is fairly easy if you get the right tools and uh, a new string. Uh, so if you have any questions, all of these parts and tools available are available on our website at howardpianoindustries.com. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and um, you know leave a comment if you've got a question um, below our video here. All right, thanks.